So, today was one of those days where a large portion of the tech press decided to run with a few tweets and write up a story. And honestly, from their perspective, I get why. Both in the Moore's Law is Dead Discord and all over various comment sections, people are debating this thrown together story from today like crazy in what would have all otherwise probably been a pretty slow news day. I get why the press does this. Uh, and of course, the story I'm re referencing is a series of tweets out there suggesting that Lovelace might not use 400 watts nor just 500 watts, but maybe up to 850 watts for a top SKU, which I do think it's worth highlighting, though, that one of the tweets that I was glossed over a little bit too much in some circles was that Copite was stating that this is something that's been whispered in the background and a lot of people that he knows has heard, but that it's not been confirmed, and that, in fact, when pressed on it by Ycry from Video Cards, that he said this entity has a 50-50 track record, which right there, right out of the gate, I've just got to say, if I had a source with a 50-50 track record, I wouldn't call that person a source. That's not good enough for me. And in fact, if you think about it, it's not good enough for Copite at least either. There's a reason he hasn't said these things yet until other people did. He doesn't believe they're reliable enough to double down on. And look, I too have heard suggestions of higher than 400 watts for Top Lovelace. And I will remind everyone watching this video what I said actually quite literally seven months ago on the 23rd of July in 2021. I said that Top Lovelace was very likely being planned to use between 350 and 450 watts with most people stating 400 to 450 watts to me, but that they were considering pushing it higher to try to trade blows with Top RDNA 3 that most people were expecting was going to take the performance crown and yeah so nvidia will consider pushing it from maybe i don't know 400 watts to 500 watts or 550 watts to get close to double the performance and to me and most of my sources we thought 500 watts sounded crazy but we did agree it's at the upper limits of what could be doable without being absolutely absurd especially if it's a pseudo 500 watt card which by that i mean it uses 500 watts in a way that an Intel CPU might use 200 or 250 watts. You know, maybe you market it as a 400 watt graphics card, but if it sees the thermal headroom and it sees it needs that extra push for like 10 seconds, maybe the 4090 pushes itself to 500 watts kicks out a little bit of extra heat in your room, but then throttles back down before it gets insane and lights your house on fire. Kind of, Again, kind of similar to like a Rocket Lake CPU. That sort of thing I could believe, and so could a lot of my sources that are following what's going on with Lovelace. You know, I could see NVIDIA pushing the non-sustained burst TDP to the limits around 500, 550 watts, but generally speaking, it's using 350 to 450 watts most of the time while gaming, even under heavy load. And, and I think that is a limit probably, and this is half opinion here, but I want to explain it for a reason. And, and that's because I have to assume NVIDIA is considering what the previous gen owners have now and what they will put up with upgrading to. In other words, if you have an RTX 3090, that is a 350 to, I guess if it's an AIB model, 450 watt card, you know, you'll say, well, anyone with a PSU capable of powering the 3090 right now at 350 watts, I'm pretty sure their PSU could power a 400 to 500 watt card. And so it's okay if the 4090 uses 450 watts. And anyone with a 320 watt 3080 can probably take a 350 watt 4080. Anyone with a 220 watt 3070 will probably accept a 250 to 300 watt 4070 if we almost double performance and that is to this day what i believe is going on and needs to be understood like before i continue that is what i believe is probably going on with whatever the top tdp is whether it's 400 500 600 watts i believe that's probably a burst tdp not sustained and it's because nvidia knows that no one who owns a 3080 at 320 watts is upgrading to a 600 watt 4080 no way and even if I can make that argument that a pseudo 500 watt card could make sense, I do think that's at the upper limits. And I've already done a whole video talking about why even that would be ridiculous, nonsensical, and basically no one should buy it if NVIDIA actually does that. I don't want to do this video regurgitating points I've already made in that one. But seeing over 800 watts creates a new host of points that I need to bring up as to why I don't think this makes any sense. And... It's just at the end of the day, especially at 800 watts, you're getting to a point where the cost benefits 
are just going to make this substantially more expensive to make than even an MCM multi-die expensively packaged RDNA 3 card. But yeah, th that's what I want to talk about in today's video. I want to talk about why it, going from 500 to 850 watts creates a whole new host of problems that I have of why this doesn't make sense. And then I also want to drop a couple little whispers and tidbits about RDNA 3. But first, an ad from a sponsor. I may not be able to stop Reese from monitoring me, but I can protect myself while I'm online. Today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's 2022, and I would assume you want to start the year off right, don't you? Well, the wrong way would be letting anyone who cares to, and a lot of organizations and governments do care to, monitor your online actions, track your data, and prevent you from enjoying streaming content that's usually arbitrarily locked away from being watched in all regions of the world. Atlas VPN protects you from all of that and even blocks ads and malware for you, including malicious links and ad trackers. Actively tries to get you the lowest price a company offers, subverting their attempts to charge you more based on location or operating system. And and it works on unlimited devices and all of this for that price is done without massively slowing down your internet right now atlas vpn is running a huge discount you can get three years of atlas vpn for just a dollar 99 a month if you click the link in the description it even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee that's right more law z fans get access to this special deal clicking this link really does help the channel. You can't stop your dog from watching you, but you can't protect yourself online if you use Atlas VPN, and you can also help Moore's Law is Dead. Click the link in the description, help Moore's Law is Dead, and help yourself in 2022 with Atlas VPN today. All right, so let me get into why I believe an 850 watt graphics card doesn't make any sense. First of all, and this one does bring up some of the points I kind of touched on it again in that 500 watt video from last year, I don't think you can cool this, but unlike me saying it would be hard to cool a 500 watt card, there are 480 watt cards that I've seen cooled on air. 850 watts, no, I straight up, I don't think you can cool this card. And I have to point out that while I am under the impression there could be 1,000, 1,200 watt hoppers, that the these dies are gonna be massive or MCM. And that my understanding, at least right now, of Top Lovelace is that it has a die size somewhat comparable to Top Ampere. And so think about what you're saying if you have an 850 watt amount of heat coming out of the same size die as uh, GA102. You're talking about over double the heat in the same tiny piece of silicon. This isn't multi-die. This is monolithic. And we're already having trouble cooling 500 watts. Now you're telling me that somehow this is over double the heat out of the same area and not on the same node, but on a node that's substantially more dense where there's runaway thermal issues. Without being someone who specializes in these, you know, literally manufacturing and designing these products, I just have to say there's like a gut check here where I go straight up. I don't think you can cool it. And even if you can cool it, it isn't with any reasonable mass manufacturable cooler consumers can use. It would have to be some exotic thing for top tier data centers, which actually I'll get to later in the video. Maybe it could be. But that's it. You know, I, I literally like this is a denser TSMC 5 nanometer. I mean. Actually, on that note, I want to get to point number two then. Remember, Lovelace is going to be made on TSMC's 5 nanometer node. Going from Samsung 8 nanometer to TSMC 5 nanometer is a substantially bigger leap in quality of node than going from TSMC's 12 nanometer to Samsung's 8 nanometer. And I actually want to show you what I mean here. So if I go there and links in the description and I look at the differences in density between these nodes, and I know that's not the only way to tell how, you know, in quotes, good a node is compared to another, but I think it's it's a fair way for us to just give you an idea. Like if we look at TSMC's 12 nanometer that Turing was based on, you can see that Samsung's 8 nanometer wasn't even twice as dense. Now compare that to going to TSMC's 5 nanometer where it's yeah, over twice as dense. In other words, look, I know that NVIDIA certainly embellished the efficiency of Ampere. It was nowhere near in real world usage 1.9 times the efficiency of Turing. That was hilarious. But it wasn't less efficient than Turing for the given raster and ray tracing performance. Uh, 
worst case scenarios, you'd find some dies pushed to the limits that were comparable to Turing's efficiency. And again, that was going from a TSMC node to a Samsung node that was cheaper. I don't see how going from Samsung 8 nanometer to TSMC 5 nanometer, and I stand by it, getting double the performance gets you... 2.4 times the power consumption. That would be less efficiency than Ampere with a node that is way, 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 way better than what they had before. Again, to reiterate, I stand by my sources. Top Lovelace is expected to be roughly double the performance of Top Ampere if they push it. That should not require over double the power consumption when you're going to a node over twice the quality of what they're using now at Samsung. I just don't believe it. I don't. I'd have to see it to believe it. But what would I believe? Let's say that I'm wrong. Let's say my info that they are, I don't know, really aiming for a 400 to 500 watt graphics card is just outdated. And that this 850 watt model isn't just something they are testing, that it's real. Well, the first thing I would say is this is likely some version of 80102 for data center. After all, I myself, I have heard that top versions of Hopper really could use over a thousand watts. And so if you're going to push that one that hard, who's to say? Who's to say they won't push top Lovelace that hard for data center? But not for gamers. I just don't think so. Unless, well... There is that 3090 Ti Kingpin that supposedly requires two 12 pins. They wouldn't give it two 12 pins for no reason. What if that's what this is? Okay, I guess maybe. That is the other argument I would hear, that this isn't some mass-manufactured SKU that Jensen Wang's not going to walk on stage with some four-slot graphics card and say, that's right, it's 850 watts, we'll be shipping hundreds of thousands of these. I think it would be something where it's like a limited edition run of a 4090 Ti that only a thousand are made. Just the top, top, top golden samples just for the tech press and just for like five or ten thousand dollars for the few amount of rich gamers who can get one. And even then they'd probably have to enter into a lottery just to buy it. I could believe that. I could believe that maybe NVIDIA pushed some insane samples like to the same performance of rdna3 that they can't really make any of them and that's what that is which now that i say it out loud kind of sounds like something nvidia would do doesn't it but that's about all i can believe at this point that it's some version of it for data center or some limited edition run that's not even real i mean they're having trouble as i've already covered even making the 450 watt plus 3090 Ti, anything above that's going to be absolutely insane as a main SKU. It probably won't even be real. You know, this talk about all of this makes me remember something I said in my now pretty famous for how accurate it was Big Navi leak. You know, the one where I said, if NVIDIA wins, it's a Pyrrhic victory. This was my RDNA 2 leak where I confirmed the rollout of the release dates, the dies, what each RDNA 2 die competed with in the Ampere lineup that all turned out to be correct. Besides, well, well, some of that pricing went to shit near the end of the lineup, <laughs> didn't it? But I digress. I bring that up again because, you know, it's funny. I actually responded to someone else in the uh, comments section of that video recently asking, was it a Pyrrhic victory in hindsight? And I said, eh, in terms of performance per SKU, I think it was. I mean, look at the 3090 Ti. It's a complete joke that Nvidia can't even make as they just shudder at the idea that AMD is about to take the performance crown early with the RX 6950 XT. You know, that was a Pyrrhic victory. But it wasn't a Pyrrhic victory in terms of, I guess, mind share and amount of cards shipped, which, as again, I've covered over half a year ago, NVIDIA is expected to ship a shit ton of Lovelace cards. I have to say that I feel like an 850 watt card would kind of be a Pyrrhic victory. It would just make them look so silly. I think people see 350 watts and they go... You know, for the 3090, and they said, well, Vega Liquid was 375 watts, and that's not that different than the GTX 480, and it's been worse before, and yada, yada, yada. 850 watts would be new even for a dual graphics card. It would be actually double what most of the previous dual graphics cards' power consumptions were. I just can't help but think that if they did this, it would just, it would just make them look silly. And so... For now, I would say it's very unlikely to be true. If it is true, it's not the SKU for gamers. Some people seem to think it is. And that 
I think a final point I want to say is there's there's no point in just leaking every little fart you hear behind the scenes because without context without waiting to have it double confirmed you know there's a lot of different types of products these companies test that never come out and even if some of these weird things we hear about do end up coming out you shouldn't assume you know what that really means with a brand new architecture and by the way leakers this is double applying to architectures that are radically new like the mi300 and rdna3 which one of those i have actually seen the layout of recently and it is vastly different from anything else radeon has launched these aren't one-to-one -one architectures. Just because you know the amount of FP32 or uh, you know the amount of workgroup clusters does not mean you can guess the performance, both good or bad, unless you think it was accurate when everyone assumed a 256-bit card was mid-range. It wasn't. The 6900 XT competed directly with the 3090. It was not a mid-range card because it was 256-bit. And... It was silly to assume you know everything about a radical new architecture. I would caution people leaking stuff about Lovelace and RDNA 3 early that just because you know one aspect of the design, it doesn't mean you actually know how it's going to perform or what that design actually means or what it will be used for. Because it really does seem to me like specifically AMD, and of course NVIDIA always is, is, is intentionally muddling up some of these designs that they send around and show off sometimes to mess with leakers. So, so, so stay frosty out there, people. Not everything that's being whispered behind the scenes is legit, nor if it is, is it exactly the way it sounds like it is. And that's really all I can say at this point because, uh, well... That's going to just about do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please check that you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Like I think a, like almost half of my viewers aren't subscribed. Check that you're subscribed. Ring the bell button so you don't miss the upcoming links that I have coming for the myriad of products coming out this and next year. And, uh, of course, consider supporting us on Patreon. You know, it supports me, Dan Gerard. Um... I'm now going to start hopefully paying a rendering person and try to get in some people for notes organizing and thumbnails so we can churn out more content of a higher quality. If you support us on Patreon, you are supporting more than a few people. You know, put food on the table, and we really can't do it without the patrons. It's our only truly reliable source of income every month. So that's there for you if you want it, if you want the premium content you get by supporting us. And then, uh, yeah, I think it's time for me to stop rambling. No matter what, though, thank you for watching.